So if you're looking for a feature in your car that can steer for you, the Rogue SL has you covered. It's called Pro Pilot Assist. Here's how it works. You simply press the blue button on your steering wheel and an icon appears on your dashboard. Once the button's pushed, the wheel will steer itself. It can also help you to speed up and slow down in traffic to keep you a safe distance from the car ahead. The Rogue SL also has an around view monitor. It's a parking aid. So when you put the car in reverse, a camera pops up so you can see the surroundings. There's also automatic emergency braking, which automatically slows or stops the vehicle if you're in danger of a crash. And finally, the Rogue SL has rear cross traffic alert. It's basically a warning that alerts you when a car is about to enter your path while you're backing up. From the road to the open water, we're on board the Charles W. Morgan at the Mystic Seaport Museum. Let's take a tour. So the Charles W. Morgan was built in 1841 in New Bedford and is the last surviving wooden whale ship anywhere in the world. She whaled for 80 years. Um, she finished whaling in 1921. So we do have three large vessels here that you can go on board. We have the Joseph Conrad, which you can see behind me. That was a training vessel for the Danish Merchant Marine that was built in 1882. We also have a Gloucester fishing schooner that was uh, built in 1921. So they can walk all around the deck, they can go down below and see where the sailors slept and worked and ate. And then we also do demonstrations on board the vessel. So we send people aloft and show how sailors would work setting sails and furling them. We also launch a whale boat that demonstrates sort of how they would sight the whale from way far up aloft and then launch a boat, go after a whale, and we don't actually go after any whales here, but we do show how they would do that. There are so many ways that maritime history touches people that they don't have any idea about. And so one of the things that we really like to do here is really show people how we have meaningful stories to tell no matter where you're from, even if you're from somewhere inland in the United States or from another country. We have stories about the human experience that touch on everyone who visits, and it's really nice to see people make connections between the history and their own lives. So one of the things that I think really makes the experience meaningful for them and really helps them to relate to, for instance, what a 19th century sailor's life was like, is to have them actually pull on a line and help us set a sail or actually help haul our one-ton whaleboat up the side of the Charles W. Morgan. And that's actually something that we invite visitors to do with us all the time. They can make rope, they can help raise a barrel. There are all sorts of things that, that they can do. And by really getting their hands dirty and becoming part of it, not too dirty of course, um, but becoming really part of what we do here, it really helps them understand in a much more meaningful way than just looking at things and reading labels. In 2014 we visited seven ports in New England with, uh, with this vessel and we had um, a professional crew and captain but we also had staff members mostly from my department who got to be what we called sailing deckhands. So we would do different legs and we would get to actually sail the ship and it was an amazing experience. So we're below deck right now in the forecastle, and tell me a little bit more about what we're seeing here. So you can see it's pretty cramped here, and believe it or not, there were 22 men that would spend three to five years living in this space. Three and to five years. Three to five years, and this was their space. So they would have had their bunk, and they would have had either a sea bag or a sea chest, something like this, mm -hmm. um, that they might have shared with another man, and that was it. They would take their meals down here, they would sleep down here. It was pretty crowded. So we had to test it out for ourselves here. We do a little log roll. <laughs> but are they, are they normally this tight? Yep, that's actually intentional. Um, not only are they trying to conserve space so that they can put a lot of people in here, but if you think about where you are, you are right in the very bow of the ship. And there's going to be a lot of motion there when you're sailing. Yes. And so you'll notice that there's actually about six feet of length in there, but you don't want it to be too wide so you can kind of wedge yourself in so you don't fall out of bed. So now we're in the blubber room. Mm -hmm. Why is it called the blubber room? It's a great question. So this is a whale ship, and mm -hmm. the thing that they were after was the blubber because that's what they would render into oil. That was the final product that they mm -hmm. wanted. And so even though it's very cramped in here, they wouldn't be standing up like we're trying to do where right. we're going to hit our heads. They would <laughs> actually be working on their hands and knees, cutting up the blubber into manageable sized pieces that they could then render the oil out of. So the best way to find out any information about what's going on, and we have tons of different activities that are happening just about every weekend, um, all year round. So the best place is our website, www.mysticseaport.org.